You're the first interview that we've given since all of this. We placed no parameters on this interview. Uh, the evidence has been turned over to us um, and it was heartbreaking. And if I say something, you mark it in your book because it'll be the truth. So I welcome that lawsuit. Well, Todd, Julie, it's so nice to chat with y'all today and sit down with you here Thank in Nashville. You. Thank you for having us. I can't believe it's been nine <laughs> seasons. I'm sure for you, you're like, what? Did you think that the show would be running this long? You know, I don't think that any of us, you know, the network, you know, which is, you know, USA has been a wonderful partner for us. I don't think any of us thought that we would be doing this for nine seasons. You know, I think in the very beginning, when we started season one, we felt like, wow, you know, if we can just make it two seasons, then, you know, we won't be a failure. Yeah. And, you know, right. here we are wrapping up the season nine. And having a spinoff and, as well. And a spinoff with Growing Up Chrisley, which is in its season three, getting ready to go into season four. And, you know, we've been very blessed. I mean, we've been very blessed, but sure. I think that that's because God has aligned us with wonderful partners. Yeah, awesome. Oh my God. Gray, you ready to get your permit? <laughs> <laughs> Where the hell are we? A place that I shouldn't even be in. What are y'all doing? None of your business. Now tell me this. How much of the show is scripted? <laughs> well, you know, I'd like to say that it's all scripted. Because oh, what you mean? Especially would, after the I fact, would, right? I would love to say yeah. it's all scripted, <laughs> but you can't script the dysfunction that goes on in our nah. life. And I, I remember the very first, first day we ever filmed Chrisley Knows Best. Uh -huh. It was day one, season one. It was Savannah's 16th birthday, August the 11th. And I remember us having this scene in a hotel down in Buckhead. Yes. And we didn't know what we were doing, but I remember getting in the car and I looked at Todd and I said, that really just happened. You know, I've watched all these shows for yeah. years and I've thought, you know, that stuff is scripted. There's no way that happened. And after that day one, I'm like, that really just happened. And there was like, no script. It just happened. So where do you see yourselves progressing to after reality TV? What does that life look like? Um, I think that I will probably move into some form of politics. Really? Um, I think that I will go back to my home state of South Carolina and I want to be a grandfather. I want to I want to help raise my grandchildren while also trying to help make this country that I love dearly a better place for everyone. Now, what do you think of that, Julie? Especially the <laughs> politics aspect, because you already got yourself into reality TV. You are right. Now you're about to dive Well, it even cannot deeper. get any worse. Can it there's not? nothing else for you to know about us. It's all out there, know, so there's no bombshells. Let me just say this. We've been together a long time, and I'm not bailing now, so <laughs> politics or no politics, I'm going to stick in there. We're going to do what we've always done, which is come together as a team and see what happens. Fair enough. All right. But how has reality television tested or taken a toll on your marriage? You know, I, people ask me all the time, what's the best and worst part about having the show and TV and all this? And I said, well, you know, imagine every day of your life going to work with your spouse, with your adult children, with your minor children, and with your mother-in-law. Oh, my. Just imagine every day that being, that being that what your life is. That's that, a lot. Right? And then living with them in real life. Exactly. Yes. And that, it's a lot. Yeah. Um, but I do think we've always, we, we sat the kids down before the show, we ever started filming the show. Mm -hmm. And we said to them, this is a job. Yes, they are going to be in our home, in our life, filming who we are. But at the end of the day, this is a job for them. And it is our job to make sure that our family is intact when all this is over. It's admirable and it's great that you sat the children down, but they're in, that you guys have been able to be, for the most part, this strong family unit mm -hmm. and army amongst yourselves. But of course, you get the trolls on the internet yes. or you get the headlines. Um, and there have been headlines. a tremendous amount of headlines about the two of you, your children. Mm -hmm. um, what headline in particular maybe has been one that has been most hurtful to your family? We've told our children that for us to allow someone that we've never met for their opinion to matter to us is giving power to something that we shouldn't even care about. And so we choose not to give free rent in our, in our minds 
to people that just don't matter to us. You know, regarding headlines, you know, there's never really been any headlines about our marriage that have bothered us because we know who we are. I guess the, the thing that probably hurt the most was um, the extortion thing with my oldest daughter, Lindsay. Okay, so let's let's go there. So Lindsay accused you and Chase of extorting her, which you vehemently denied. That's correct. So where does that stand? How did that start? Um, you know, listen, without going into too much detail, because you know, she is my daughter and I love her. Um, Lindsay, there was just some kind of emotional battle that Lindsay has had within herself and, you know, jealousy with, amongst her siblings and, you know, it, it started out with, you know, Savannah having way more social media followers and then it started out that Lindsay wasn't getting enough time on the show and, and then, you know, it was, you know, that Lindsay was in Atlanta and we were all here and, you know, we wanted the show to be authentic. And, you know, why are you here in these episodes if your life is in Atlanta? And, you know, Lindsay wasn't at that time willing to allow the cameras into her personal life. She wouldn't tell the world anything. And so, you know, and then we find out that there never really was a sex tape. Okay, so you're speaking on two fronts. Yes. First, the extortion of the sex tape. Mm -hmm. But secondly was the fact that Allegedly, two of your children went to authorities. They went to the Georgia Department of Revenue. Uh, the evidence has been turned over to us, um, and it was heartbreaking. As a parent, where do you go from there? How do you get through that? You know, I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, I pray to God every day. You ask the question, what has been the hardest thing? It has been the hardest thing, because I don't know where you go from that. When you have a child that you have loved the way that Lindsay has been loved, and and this happens. So they went to authorities, but was there any truth with what they presented no. to the authorities? No. Because you guys have been accused and, and you're facing charges mm -hmm. from state uh, evasion charges of well, taxes that's been, oh, to that's federal. Been dismissed. That's been dismissed. The state charges have yes, been dismissed, mm -hmm. but where do you now stand with the federal charges? Um, we're still working through that process. I think there was a lot of stuff that came out um, about four weeks ago that the that was not known to the government. There's one other case, a defamation case. Yes. Where did things stand on that part? Oh, I love that case. I have never been more excited in my life for something. Hmm. Because here's the, here's the thing about defamation. Your defense against slander is the truth. And if I say something, you mark it in your book because it'll be the truth. So I welcome that lawsuit. Now, what she's not aware of is what we're sitting on. Well, Todd Chrisley has spoken. Yes. He has indeed. Yes. We haven't sat down with anyone. You're the first interview that we've given since all of this. We placed no parameters on this interview. We said, ask us whatever you want to ask us. And, you know, you ask the question, what's been the most difficult? That has been the most difficult. And Kyle has come to us and he has asked for forgiveness. And, you know, he has struggled with drugs and he's clean and he's doing, doing the best that he's done in, I can't tell you how long. Lindsay has not solved that remorse. I want to know more about Lindsay. She recently announced that she is getting a divorce. Have you heard from Lindsay since she announced that news of her divorce? Um, I received, I have not heard from Lindsay. Have you reached out to her? I have not. Um, I received a text message from Lindsay about two weeks ago and I turned that over to our attorneys. Why? Um, because we don't feel that it's safe to communicate. Um, even to say, I hope you're doing well. No, I'm here for um, you. because every time that I've done that, it's been twisted and turned. And so we can't, in the position that we're in, we can't run that risk. So we turned it over to our attorney and we let them handle it. I'm sad that my daughter chose to make decisions that she's made in her life. Um, but you know, when you get married, marriage is supposed to be forever. And anytime a third party gets involved, it's not a good thing. So a third party got involved on her husband. There was a third party involved um, the first go round, and I think they tried to work through that. And um, I don't know what happened the second time. How does it make you feel, Julie? Because you welcomed these children in from Todd's first marriage. You adopted Lindsay. Lindsay came to me after she turned 18, and said, "This is what I've done. I've already contacted an attorney. I've already had the papers drawn up. Would you be willing to adopt me?" And 
I was floored. I have loved these children since they were five and six years old. And I said, a piece of paper does not dictate my love for you. But if you feel that you need that and that will help you, then absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, Julie said something the other day that I thought was so profound and I was like, wow, I'm so glad to be married to this woman. She said, the one thing I will never apologize for is the kind of mother that I have been. And when you can say that as a parent, you're on solid ground. Yeah. There was never any extortion. That was all used for headlines. That was used to gain social media following. Lindsay went and sat in, in front of the press with an attorney. And, and Dr. Phil. And Dr. Phil. Did you backdoor secret source the federal government against your family? No. You were not a whistleblower that turned the federal government onto your family's wrongdoing? No. Did you want to bring Chris Lee Knows Best down in flames? No. Every ounce of it was a lie, and now she has to sit for a deposition next month, and all of this stuff, it's gonna be videoed. So all of this stuff is coming out that she's done, and that she now knows that we know she's done. Right. Where do you go from here? You're currently estranged, oh, but you're not doing anything in regards to legal matters against your daughter. No. For her. No. She's our daughter, and I will tell you that the anger was there for a long time because the anger, you know, the devil works with you with the anger. Revenge and anger belongs to the devil. So I walked with the devil. I was dancing with the devil there for a minute and God allowed me to get back into my faith and to walk in faith and forget about the fear. And I had to remember that I am a father first and that, you know, when you have children and you discipline your children, the world's not gonna see that. But when Todd Chrisley disciplines his children, it's a headline. Julie and I came from very humble beginnings and it was our life's goal to make sure that our children always had more than what we came from. And I gave them that a million times more. So if I had my time to go over, there would have been less cars, less vacation homes. I would have made them get jobs. And I didn't do that because I was feeding that child in me that didn't come from it when I thought I was doing it to benefit my own children. How is Kyle doing? Because you guys finally reconciled last season on the show. Mm -hmm. I want my family back and I'll do whatever it takes in order to make that happen. You know that I love you. Yeah. And I would want nothing, nothing more than that. He's faced so many issues mm -hmm. with drugs. He's had his own demons. Yes. Where did the two of you stand today? We're great. We're probably in the best place that we've ever been. Um, I, he came to me and asked for forgiveness and he told us what his part was and we confirmed it and we, what do you do? Yeah. You have no choice but to forgive your child. I've always known that Kyle was a good person, that he had a good heart, but they have struggled with abandonment issues their entire life because their mother walked away. And so, you know, that loss for them, I'm sorry for. Um, that was a marriage that should have never happened. You know, my ex got pregnant, we got married. That was the town that we came from, a little small country town and we got married, but there was never any true love. Julie is the, Julie is the love of my life. And, the, I'm, and I'm grateful to God that I can say that that belongs to one woman. I have been many, but um, <laughs> I've only been in love with one. How long do you foresee the show running and when will be the time that you say, okay, we gotta walk away from reality TV? You know, I, I think that the show is gonna go on for as long as people tune in and they wanna know what's going on in our lives. But come on, in your mind, Todd, are you thinking, okay, we got it in us for like two more years, one more year, five more I years? I really don't. No? I really don't. I feel like that that's God's timing and that he'll let us know when it's time for us to walk away. Mm. You know, listen, I grew up in the South, so did you. Um, and my grandmother used to always say that, you know, to my aunt, you know, a lady, always knows when to leave. And mm -hmm. so, you know, we don't want to overstay our welcome in anyone's lives. And I think that the viewers will tell us when it's time to walk away. Okay.